Good morning. I'll tell you a story about something that happened in the early 1900s. I think it happened around 1910, 1911. Uh, they had schools back then. This happened up in Virginia. And this was in a mining town. And the parents there wanted to have uh, their children educated. So they raised the money, they built a school, and they would have to actually hire teachers. So they put an advertisement in the paper to get a teacher to come to the school. Well, these were mining children. And uh, sometimes they could be a little rough. So the first year the teacher came, and that teacher lasted less than half of the school year and quit. And they had to get another teacher. That teacher lasted that school year, the rest of it, and the next one after that, and then he quit as well. So by the third year, they had a brand new teacher. The school had a reputation for being a very hard school to stay at because the kids sometimes were very unruly. You ever have kids in your class like that? Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you that back then they did something totally different than what they do today in school. Okay. So, so listen, they got a brand new teacher. The brand new teacher knew what he was cut, uh, getting into. So when the teacher came into class, the teacher got the students together and said, okay, I'm going to let you guys set up the rules. What should be the rules for the class? So they sat down and they said, well, uh, first thing is that there should be no stealing because somebody's always eating my lunch. And so they wrote that down in those deal. Okay, and then they come up with some other rules. And the teacher goes, well, don't you think it should be a good rule to actually listen to the teacher? And they said, oh, they like the no stealing part. But they said, okay. So they liked this teacher because he actually listened to them and gave them some input into how their school should run. So listen. He also asked them, okay, if you break the rules, what's going to be the punishment? And so, like I said, back then they did something totally different than what they do with you guys in school. How many of you guys remember corporal punishment? You remember being spanked in school? In second grade. I thought you were the perfect child. I remember being spanked in school as well. So listen, that was the rule because that was, that was a common practice back then. Uh, and so the rule was, the kids brought this up, the kids said, if you break one of these rules, then you should get ten lashes uh, on your back without your shirt on. Okay? You think that'd be a good deterrent for not breaking the rules? Well, kids are kids, so that lasted a very short period of time. The first thing that happened was, the kids came into school, and in the back of the room, they had a little area where all the kids put their lunch. Okay? And then when lunchtime came, they go back and eat. There was this one little boy. His name was Jimmy. Little Jimmy. Little Jimmy came from a very poor family. And little Jimmy hardly ever ate before he came to school. And so he didn't eat breakfast. He never had anything for lunch. And sometimes he didn't get dinner. So when little Jimmy came to the class, he saw all that food in the back. What do you think went on in his mind? So one day... That was little Jimmy. One day, Big Paul found his lunch missing. Okay? Now, Big Paul was named Big Paul because he was the biggest kid in the school. His daddy was one of the biggest miners that was in the town. And he took after his dad. So, Big Paul went back there and said, Somebody stole my lunch. And he was quite upset. And they found out that it was little Jimmy who actually stole the lunch. And so you know what the punishment was, right? Right? Ten lashes without your overshirt on. You could have your undershirt on, but not. so this was in the wintertime, and Jimmy had his jacket on. So Jimmy came to the front, realized what he did was wrong, and was ready for the punishment. So Jimmy took off his coat, and nobody realized that he didn't even have a shirt because he couldn't afford it. So Jimmy was going to get lashed on his bare back. And Big Paul, when he took off his shirt, realized how small and thin Jimmy was. And when the teacher got ready to hit him, Paul said, stop. And he just couldn't see 
that little bone boy getting beat like that. And the teacher asked him, what do you want me to do? You guys set up the rules. And Paul said, I'll take his punishment. And Paul came to the front. And he hugged Jimmy, brought him into his chest. As the teacher beat him on his back. One lash, two lash, five lash, ten lashes. And each time the whip came down on his back, little Jimmy could feel him hunch over, hear him cry a little bit. And after the ten lashes, when he was done, he let go of little Jimmy. Little Jimmy turned around and just hugged him as hard as he could, thanked him for taking his punishment. And we're having communion service today. I want you to understand what that communion service means. When we take the bread, it symbolizes Jesus' body. When we drink that grape juice, it symbolizes his blood. Because Jesus did the same thing for you and I that Paul did for little Jimmy. That he took his punishment and Jesus takes your punishment. Now listen, you guys disobey. You may disobey your parents. You may disobey at school and get punished for that. But that's nothing compared to the punishment that we rightly deserve from God for disobeying Him. Jesus loves you so much that He took that punishment because He doesn't want to see you hurt at all. <coughs> So when you take this communion service, I want you to think about what it is that Jesus did for you. And then I want you to think of why he would love you so much. Why? Do you deserve to be loved that much? Now we look at you guys and we say, we love little kids. And you deserve all the love you can get. But I want you to turn around and I want you to look at all these adults in here. Because they're looking at you. Turn around. And look at all those people. And each one of them here have to realize the same thing I'm asking you to think about. Why would Jesus love you so much that he took your punishment, that you rightly deserved, and took it on himself, that he had no part of? He gives you something that you would never be able to get yourself, and that's called righteousness. Being right with God. And the reason why he did it is because he loves you and he does not want to be without you. All the same thing for all you adults here as well. As Big Paul took little Jimmy's punishment, Jesus has done the same for you. As you come to this communion table today, think about what God has done and fall back in love with Him so that you will be willing to allow God to work in you and through you so that you can bring other people to know this great one. Can you do that? I thought you guys could go back to your seats. Mm -hmm.